we have all of our panelists here and um, we uh, will, I'm sure some folks will trickle in from other meetings, but we can get started. Thank you all so much for joining today. And I, I know a lot of you on the call, uh, but for those of you I don't know, I'm Lindsay Gleason. I'm the Assistant Director at the Community Foundation of the New River Valley. And I'm the main contact at the Community Foundation for Give Local NRV. Um, and we have a lot of great panelists here um, who are going to answer some, some questions um, from our wonderful nonprofit partners. And so, um, I'm, and we also have uh, Jess and Laura and Sarah um, uh, who are, just make up the, the Giving Day team. So I can let folks um, introduce themselves if Sarah and uh, Community Foundation team wanna kick things off. I'm um, Jessica Wergo on the staff of the Community Foundation. I'm Laura Penn and I am as well. And I'm Sarah. I'm a project manager with the Mighty Cause. So we are the platform provider for Give Local. And they are our fabulous partners through the giving event. Um, and I, I can just name off people. Um, intros on Zoom are always special. Uh, Jenny, if you would like to uh, go next. Yeah, thank you. I'm Jenny Ayers, Executive Director at Literacy Volunteers of the New River Valley. Thanks. Barb? I'm Barb Clark, and I'm the Executive Director at the New River Valley Disability Resource Center. Shannon? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon Hardwick at the Junebug Center. Uh, Car uh, Carolyn? Hi, everyone. I'm Carolyn Riley. I'm the Development Director at Springhouse Community School down in Floyd County. And Laureen? Hey, I'm Laureen Blakemore. I'm the Director of Community Engagement at the YMCA at Virginia Tech. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, everyone. And for those who are uh, just attending, if you want to put um, your name and affiliation in the chat, we would love to know um, who's on the call and what organization you're with. Um, so can folks see my screen okay? Great. So today's webinar is focused on strategies for a su successful um, Giving Day campaign. Um, and that's me, Lindsay, um, and we'll share more contact information at the end of the call. Um, but I, I'm going to kick off by just sharing a little bit about um, uh, our Giving Day event, and then we'll um, go and chat with each panelist. And how it will work is what we want to talk today about is our different strategies that we've seen folks use successfully in the past, and not just with our giving event, but with Mighty Cause's expertise at other giving events um, across the nation. So. And then, then we have a panelist from several uh, several nonprofits, as you all can see, who are going to share about their experience with different strategies and what's worked for them in the past and what um, they will have, uh, what advice they have for others. So um, as many of you probably know, uh, we are very excited because this year is our 10th anniversary of Giving Day. And in the past 10 years, um, well, the past nine years, uh, our community, all of you, so many organizations and donors have come together to raise $2.6 million for our community, which is pretty extraordinary. So this year, um, we have 68 organizations who've registered to participate so far, and registration closes on May 25th. So you all still have some time to register, but um, I know, I don't know about you all, but April's already going fast. So we just encourage folks to register as soon as they can. And uh, registration closes a week before the early giving period. Um, early giving will kick off on June 1st and end Wednesday, June 28th at 11.59. And we'll kick off at noon that day for our giving day, which will go till noon the next day. So the tools and strategies that we're going to cover today, um, we're going to talk about the peer-to-peer -peer tool with Carolyn from Springhouse Community School, events with um, Laureen from YMCA and Shannon from the Junebug Center, social media, Sarah and I will cover that. We're going to talk about matches with Barb from the Disability Resource Center, email campaigns with Ginny from uh, Literacy Volunteers. I'll talk about strategy around power hours and golden tickets. 
Sarah is going to share a bit about a new tool that we have this year called Text to Give. And then at the end, I'll share um, a bit of information about the grants and prizes we have this year. All right, so I'm going to um, switch um, over to chat with Carolyn. Um, Carolyn, if you want to share a little bit about um, how long community or the community school's been involved with Give Local and um, what your role is at, at Spring House. Sure. Um, we have been involved with Give Local um, since before it was called Give Local, <laughs> when it used to be called Give Big. Um, I believe since the beginning of the giving days um, in Springhouse. So Springhouse has existed for nine years. We're actually entering our 10th year. So I think from the very beginning, we got connected to CFNRB and the giving days. Um, I'm the development director, as I mentioned earlier. And one way that we really, well, do you want me to start jumping in to peer to peer? Sure. Sure, of course. Um, so if you want to share a little bit about what the peer to peer tool is and how you all have used it in the past, that'd be great. Great. Um, and Sarah from Mighty Cause, feel free to jump in if there's technical things I'm not getting right. But uh, yeah, the peer to peer tool has been our greatest way to grow the network of donors, essentially. Um, you know, I, I imagine that every organization here has volunteers or current donors who are really big advocates for your organization, for your nonprofit. You have maybe other staff, maybe you don't. Um, but we've found that using this tool, the peer-to-peer, -peer, which essentially gives every individual that's connected to a, a nonprofit through the Mighty Cause platform can create a fundraiser so easily just going to the main page the main main landing page for your organization there's a fundraise button and there's a lot of cool options to set up templates for individual fundraisers there's a, a great tools um, I've, I've really enjoyed using mighty cause for this um because you can create a campaign name a set image sample text for someone who wants to fundraise for you so what we've we've really done is empowered all the staff at our school. Um, we've empowered teens or teens' parents to basically say, be an advocate for us. You know, we we know people get tired of us asking them for money. It's like, will you ask for money for us, for this place that you care about? Your teen goes here or you're an adult participant who's been to some of our retreats or past programs or staff members who are deeply committed to the work here. So it's a good way to share the personal story and how your organization has impact um, to the people who are who are advocating for your success. Um, it's really I, th I can't remember the most number of peer to peer pages we've had, but I know in the past it's just fun to go through on the giving day and see all the different Springhouse fundraisers that are created um, through the support, how we, you know, we really empower and encourage people step-by-step step how to do it. Um, and usually we do it, we create a template just to help with a prompt, you know, an invitation to tell their personal story that's connected to our larger campaign message and story. I'm curious, if you have questions, Lindsay, that are coming to mind that you want me to explore further, please ask. Sure. Sure, and I should have mentioned if folks have questions that they want to add in the chat while panelists are talking, please feel free, um, or you can save them to the end as well. Um, Carolyn, it's been so exciting to watch you all um, use the tool so well, um, and I think you touched on this a little bit. But what would you, what advice might you give to someone who is thinking about using the tool but um, is maybe not sure how to make that ask to people? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, I would start with the people who are close. You know, who is close to you and your organization? Maybe it's one solid committed volunteer, you know, who shows up for everything. Or maybe it's someone on your social media who actually like engages and responds to posts more regularly. And maybe it's setting a goal of I'm going to find five people this year 
you know, start with what's realistic for your nonprofit, your organization, and take, take the next step, you know, just inviting a conversation about it. Would you be willing to have a fundraising page? I'll help you set it up. And um, there's, there's the tools on Mighty Cause are really helpful. And there's a lot of training videos and support for that. And I'm, if people want to reach out to me, I'm happy to help too, if there's anything I can do um, further, but I would just start with who's close and who really cares uh, and start small and, and watch it grow. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think sometimes little successes can help build and um, kind of depending on what uh, uh, organization you're with or team you're on, maybe some healthy competition uh, can be fun just to, it's just fun to see numbers go up and um, encourage people in your network to donate and to personalize your own fundraising page. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just one other thing I'll add in there quickly is it might be helpful to say, you know, can you seek 10 people to give $10, right? Like you could think of like help people come up with a, a structure to experiment in, you know, could you find five people to give 50, you know, and ha- like set little micro goals that might help your constituents or the people who are going to be your advocates in creating this page, um, just something to play with, right? Like what's like our teens, who are they appealing to? Probably grandparents and family. So, you know, their, their goal may just be five people in their family, maybe no money amount, but you know, there's just so many options in it and structure, a little more structure may help and a little less might be better for certain people. So it's really relational and knowing who you're asking to advocate and fundraise for you. Absolutely. Well, thanks for sharing, Carolyn. Um, I know that everyone, uh, we all, we have just short periods of time with each one of you, but I appreciate you sharing that so much. Um, and we can, um, I, I think, uh, toss it back over to Sarah, if you just want to share um, a little bit about what it looks like um, when you're setting up your page. Yep. Um, let's see. Okay, so from the platform kind of tool side of things, um, we have kind of three different options when it comes to peer to peer fundraising. Uh, I've put here the two that you will probably 99% of the time use, um, and that's individual fundraisers. Uh, and then in some cases, you'll want to use a team fundraiser. So two kind of variations of the same thing. Um, So individual fundraisers, they're created by a supporter. So, and I put supporters in parentheses because one person can, you know, use the same page link with a friend if they're fundraising together and they want to share the same link. Um, So they're using and setting up an individual page looks something like that um, to try and solicit donations from family, uh, any of their kind of circle of supporters. Um, And then in some cases, you might also want to set up a team fundraiser, and that's basically made up of a bunch of different individual fundraiser pages. Um, So kind of use cases if you have literally a team who wants to work together or your board, uh, maybe you have 10 board members who all want to create a page and there's some gamification around it. Um, It's fun because these pages offer a leaderboard. You can kind of see on the, the image there's a little leaderboard. Um, it shows how people are doing, uh, it how offers a kind of another level of engagement for people who are working together towards one goal. So they can set kind of a team goal where all their pages stack together. Um, if you go to the next one, Lindsay. Um, so setting it up is super easy. Uh, basically, you'll send the link to fundraise your organization page to any supporters. They click fundraise. It prompts them to create the fundraiser. Uh, they'll click get started, um, and then they just click build the fundraiser. And this is kind of what uh, we were hearing about how you can kind of create a template to kind of cut down a couple steps for people, make it really easy for your peer-to-peer supporters to just kind of jump in and see some content already on their page, um, and then they can adjust from there. Um, next one. I think there's three here. Um, and then from your end as an administrator for your organization, uh, this is kind of what your dashboard looks like. You have, if you go to fundraising tools, you'll see campaigns, 
uh, in fundraiser templates, that's pretty much what you'll use here. Campaigns is going to show all of your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, pages. So you'll get to see any peer-to-peer -peer pages that were set up for last year's event. You can hide ones that might no longer be active and you don't want them to show up in the search on Give Local NRV. Um, you can see who the owner is. Uh, there's lots of just good data here. Um, and then if you also want to cut down some steps for your supporters, make it easy for them, you can click funders or templates uh, and you can create one template. So that's kind of what it looks like. You can add an image, add a heading, add a goal, um, everything like that. So, and Sarah, it looks like we have a, a question in the chat. Um, if I can get the chat to pop open. Um, so can pages be set up in advance and set to go live on June 1st? Um, so when the page is set up, it is live, but you can toggle discoverability. So you can hide the page manually yourself. Okay. So it's just one that one extra step to flip the switch on June 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, and um, uh, we're going to move on to chatting about events, but uh, as questions come up about any of the topics, please feel free to add them in the chat. Um, and so Laureen and Shannon, thanks so much for joining today. And um, I know you all have kind of formatted events in a, a few different ways, but if you just want to kick things off by sharing your role at your organization and how long you've been involved with um, Give Local. Do you have a preference who goes first? Go for it, Shannon. <laughs> okay, great, great. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Shannon from the Junebug Center. I'm the executive director here. And um, Give Local, I don't know, maybe Laura can help me. I This is my second year here, so I don't know how long we've been involved. I think a little while, though. Um, it, it's been, been several years from what, what it I... It has? Oh, okay, it. okay. Yeah. I think it has Sorry, been I don't since know the that. beginning. Oh, it has? Okay, good. So we've mm -hmm. been here since the beginning. I'm just new to it. <laughs> Um, but I, I will say, like, when I first looked at some of this stuff, especially that peer to peer, I was so intimidated. But the more we get into it, um, the coordinator and I, Risa Matson, the more we play with stuff, it's really user friendly and it's not nearly as scary as I think I built it up to be. Um, so, anyway. Um, what did you want me to talk about? I'm sorry. Did, did you have a question sure. after I introduced sure. myself? You're good. Um, and we can kind of take it by each of you. If you, if you just want to share what types of events you've had in the past. Um, I think we typically do have an on-site event, or that's what I've been told historically. Last year um, was the event I was involved in, and what we did was an open house. And um, I will definitely say the promotion there we probably could have improved that greatly. It was our first event. I didn't really know when to start promoting it. And there was a lot of events happening at the same time, you know, at a lot of open houses, um, right, just right down the road <laughs> from us, actually. So um, I, I think we're a little bit more prepared this year, but we had an open house and our whole goal was to, um, as somebody came into the facility, what could we show them that would explain what the Junebug Center is? So we took every room and we dedicated it to a program. So when they walked into the Lego room, there were Legos um, everywhere and all these different steam projects we did from zip lines to boats floating. And then we had a description of what the Lego club was, for example, and that was also in that room. So we, we, we kind of did, we just did that with every single room and every single program and, um, for the people that did show up, I won't pretend we had a huge crowd. We did not. But um, for those that did show up, they were really impressed. So we definitely are going to do something similar. Um, we are going to improve our promotion. Um, events in the past, I think we've done some outdoor stuff too, like some festivals or some kids programming. But again, um, I think the key to a lot of these events and online or in person, it's to promotion and how you promote it and getting the word out. And sometimes it's that individual invitation, you know, me texting or emailing or even calling up somebody, we're more likely to get people to show up that way. Absolutely. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah. And Shannon, you all have been great at doing videos. 
of oh yeah yeah I mean we were so intimidated by that too but I mean I, I kind of work with the perfect people for this stuff we're an arts and entertainment center, so <laughs> I'm like act you know what I mean um, but we also have musicians, the jams program. There's nothing like a little kid playing a fiddle and a banjo to, you know, to, to really sell that video. So yeah, I, I think reaching out to all your different staff and instructors and help with those videos, because clearly nobody wants to hear me, even though you all are listening. I'm sorry. Nobody wants to hear me just talking about the June Bug Center. I'd rather see a kid playing the banjo. I mean, wouldn't you? Absolutely. That's great. Hey, Laureen, I can pass it over to you if you just want to share your role at the Y and how long you've been involved with Give, Give Local. Okay, um, Laureen Blakemore at the YMCA at Virginia Tech, and um, I've been there since January 2020, um, but I believe the Y has been involved in Give Local every year, I think, mm -hmm. since it started. Um, so for me, you know, 2020, what a great year to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually that year we, we didn't have an event as such. We, we actually worked with a, a, a young high school student who just went out and interviewed. And, you know, we just put together a really nice video of what we do and the people we're serving. And, you know, that kind of took place instead of an event. Um, but for the last two years now, we've been doing um, a, couple of, a couple of different things. Last year, particularly, we, a few days before Big Lo uh, Give, Give Local Day, we did um, our food truck design reveal where we'd been having a contest to see which design would be picked and combined that with the Chamber of Commerce ribbon cutting. And, um, and of course, throughout that, you know, we were promoting what was going on. Give Local was, this year for us, we had a, we set a goal for um, enhancing our money in our feeding program. Um, so it was really like, you know, give us money and feed children. <laughs> it's, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Um, so, you know, that was that was our pre-day event. And then on the day for the past two years, we've had happy hours in two different places. Um, so we're partnering with local businesses for that, which makes it a little bit easier. So we hit um, Christiansburg, we were at Iron Tree Brewery, and then um, happy hour in, in Blacksburg Wine Lab. And um, you know, we had the two events there. Um, my advice, I don't know if you want that yet, but I might as well sure. just, you know, be very clear about your expectations with the partnering businesses, because, you know, the last year, uh, you know, we didn't really say, oh, you know, will you give us some money as part of it? We just said, oh, we're going to host this big thing there. And anybody who comes in, we'll talk to. Um, this year, we're a little wiser because we discovered that people turning up at the event we're buying things from the business, assuming that a percentage was being given to us. So, you know, then we were having to talk to them and, and say, well, no, that's not the case. So we're, we're going to make it a, even easier this year um, by getting those businesses on board well ahead of time. So, you know, that that's, that's something I've learned. <laughs> um, and another thing I always, uh, you know, you were talking about the marketing part of it. The, the best tool we've got is to bring along a group of your solid supporters, your board members, your, your, you know, your big Facebook followers. And if you can get them there, then they'll get other people to come. And, and they're also doing the job for you as well. You know, talking to people about what your, what your cause is, what, what the money's going to, um, and making it very obvious, you know, that your money is going to buy this or whatever. Um, we have been fortunate to have a, a matching grand tour for the last two years as well. So, you know, of course we invite them and we really put signage everywhere to make sure people knew that they, you know, believed in us enough to match up to a certain amount. So I think that helps a great deal. And of course, invite the community foundation members to come along to your events <laughs> because they give it some extra publicity. Uh, you know, they let people know what's going on. I mean, I know you try and do that anyway, but you know, it's it's great to have have them turning up as well. So um, I think that's kind of how we're planning on working again this year. But having, you know, partnering with a, a local business, you're catching people that you might never see. And it gives you a chance to talk to them, you know, no, no pressure, but at least they can see what you're doing while you're there. They'll ask questions and, you know, maybe make donations and start to learn more about your organization. So you know, as long as well as bringing your own 
groupies, as it were, um, we found that really helpful just to hit people that we wouldn't normally hit. You know, if we ideally, you know, of course you want to have it in your own premises, but sometimes you're only going to get the same people coming. So this way we're finding that we can, we can definitely hit some people that we wouldn't normally see. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing. Absolutely. Hey, thank you both for sharing about that. I know we're kind of doing lightning round style going from topic to topic, but I appreciate you sharing the idea of welcoming people into your facility and showcasing your work in person so people can see exactly what their donor dollars are doing or doing something more social. And, and certainly if you all, if you all are planning on an event, send that information to the community foundation and we're happy to um, share about it and um, try to show up because it's always fun to see you all in action. So thank you to, to Shannon and Laureen. We're going to, um, uh, uh, our next stop on the Giving Day uh, train is going to be just chatting a little bit about social media strategy. Um, and Sarah, um, I know that you do a lot of work on Giving Days uh, all over. Um, so would love to hear a little bit from you about what you see kind of works best with um, a strategy on social media. Yeah. Um, so what we see that usually works best on social media um, is just starting now, starting early. If you don't have social media, if you're kind of a sporadic poster, um, kind of creating a timeline of content that you want to share is really helpful. Um, you know, laying out each of up the upcoming weeks. Not everyone has capacity to like post every single day. That's a lot. I mean, just creating captions can be stressful enough when it comes to socials. Um, so, you know, making small goals for yourself, uh, wherever you are going to be posting, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or kind of a mix of everything. Uh, we always encourage going where the bulk of your audience is, um, making sure like you're putting your energy and efforts into the space that's going to have the most payback. Um, so definitely keeping that in mind, pre-scheduling uh, as much content as you can. Um, there's a bunch of free resources out there, um, like I mean, nowadays people are using, what is it, auto-generated social media kind of captions and stuff, uh, which is pretty neat stuff. Um, but you can also set up free Canva accounts for designing, kind of pre-scheduling um, Instagram posts or Facebook posts. Um, and then also, uh, we always encourage, if you have the, the budget, boosting for some posts when you get closer to the event is really helpful. Um, even just paying to, you know, $10 to try to boost just to the audience that's following you is really helpful. Uh, unfortunately, you sometimes do have to pay to get your content in front of people. So if you're going to do it, that's the time to do it. Um, you know, the day of the event, the day before the event, when you're really trying to drum up as much activity and excitement as you can. Um, that's pretty much what we see works the best for socials. Yeah, and I would add figuring out ways to tell stories and not have it always just be an ask. Um, I think about my high school English teacher saying show, don't tell. And I think in this case, you want to probably show and tell. So show people the impact of your work through stories and, and maybe numbers that you have, the number of clients served, pounds of food out in the community, whatever your metrics are, but also ask them if they'll they'll make a gift. Um, and folks who have been around for a bit with Give Local know that online you can give as low as five dollars and really emphasizing the impact of the community aspect of uh, uh, of the event of everyone coming together in any of your messaging. Um, we also have a, a hashtag that we use. It's hashtag Give Local NRV. Just put that in the chat and we'll have some um, we're working on a 10th anniversary logo and some other um, uh, materials that you all are welcome to use in social media if that's useful to you. Um, and I, I would also say, and Sarah, feel, definitely feel free to um, disagree, but I, I think that sometimes people rely on social media expecting to get more gifts than maybe they do. And I think in my experience, I've seen more gifts come out of that direct email outreach and working with your email list. Um, would you, how would you see, say that kind of goes? Uh, I think it's... It that's a good point. I mean, I think it varies depending on the nonprofit and how much you have for an audience online. Mm -hmm. I think for most organizations, um, a lot of weight is put into email. 
it's just a very direct form of communication. You don't have to fight with an algorithm to try and show up on, you know, in people's phones and stuff like that. Um, so I would say kind of, yes, a mix of both. I would say email is definitely, if you don't have an email list yet, start building that now. Um, you can always use it, you know, in the next couple months or even just next year's event. Um, but yeah, social media, it's, it can be hit or miss. I think the best use of it is to, um, just drum up excitement, even if it's a link in bio that directly goes to a donate button. Uh, I do think that's one of the best ways to just stay in front of people's faces who are on socials, um, because people love video. I mean, you want to see what's happening behind the scenes at these organizations. Um, so even if you, you know, are in, on Instagram and you're just, you only have five minutes of your day, you can always pull out a phone and just maybe take a picture of staff or volunteers just to show that there's things happening um, because everyone just, everyone loves behind the scenes types of footage. And I think that's where you're gonna get the best um, kind of interaction with that. Absolutely. And it's fun on Give Local Day to go to your social media page and in your feed, see everyone posting about it. And it's just, um, it's and leading up to the event too during Give, uh, early giving to see the excitement building and reminders to people that it's it's here and time to make a gift and encourage others to. Um, so thanks, Sarah. Hey, we're going to um, switch over and chat with Barb um, about the about matches. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, to start with, I want to give you all a quick elevator pitch because it's very much part of my five minute presentation. Uh, I already introduced myself as the Executive Director of the New River Valley Disability Resource Center. We are a Center for Independent Living, the newest of 17 Centers for Independent Living in the state. We all, 17 of us, have five core services, which include advocacy, independent living skills training, peer support, transitions, and information and referral. Information and referral is your bread and butter when you're talking about matching grants. You need to know who does what, and it's even more important to know who does what in each company. Acquaint yourself with those people, acquaint yourself with the management, with the leadership, and with the board of directors. Um, you know, you build, you build on who does what. So when you have identified an agency or a business that has a mission that is similar to yours or could be similar to yours. It's all about creating that opportunity, which hopefully will give you a matching grant in the future. Um, the first thing you want to think about is what can you do for the agency or business or center that might have someone interested in working with your establishment. So what can you do to benefit them? It's not about seeking to get something from them. It's about mutual respect, relationship building, and partnering before you can have a discussion about reciprocating in a financial sense. Um, and those things need to happen first and over a, a considerable amount of time before you can introduce uh, financial giving or not necessarily even giving at that point, but your financial resources and what your background is and who, who are your primary donors and who are your board members who are most supportive and why. And then you can introduce those things into a conversation. And that conversation doesn't stop um, because you know one matching grant from one agency or business can lead to another matching grant the following year from a different agency or business. So back to information and referral, it really is about who's doing what for who. Absolutely. And um, I think sometimes um, when people hear um, about a matching grant, they think it has to be an enormous figure. Um, but I, I think that we've seen from our experience at the Community Foundation um, and from what Sarah has shared from Mighty Cause that something as low as $200 can be incentivizing to donors. Um, so Barb, can you share a little bit about how you um, structured your math last year and how you ended up meeting your goal? 
There was no magic to it, Lindsay. <laughs> we, we announced, well, in a perfect world, you want to be able to announce who your donor is, whose money are you matching? Because I think that that speaks equally loudly. Um, in this particular scenario, the individual who um, created the, the base for our matching grant didn't want to be identified. But we made it loud and clear that we had a matching grant available. And I think just mentioning that the fact you've got a matching grant, I mean, think about the um, the radio-a-thons and the telethons. Everybody wants to give when they think they're, do they're doubling their money. Absolutely. And um, what would you um, kind of suggest to somebody who's thinking about uh, approaching um, a donor for a potential match gift, uh, what advice would you give them? You've got to be in it for the long game. If you're thinking today about matching grant, you're going to get it 60 days from now, you've kind of missed the boat. If you're thinking today about who you might find to do a matching gift one or two years from now, now's the time to start cultivating those relationships. Awesome. Thank you so much, Barb. We appreciate you uh, joining in. And one thing I'll share from what we've seen at the Community Foundation is um, you could potentially, um, I, I agree that time is short, but you also can potentially approach a board member who always gives every year and ask them if they might want to be a matching donor um, because you know that they like to support Giving Day. Um, so you might have some people or just even just a close friend of your organization, one of your fans um, and ambassadors for your organization. Um, if you know that someone is going to give on Giving Day because they like to support the event, that might be um, a request that you, you can make because you already have that established relationship. It's not just calling someone out of the blue, although um, certainly call people out of the blue and you see what happens sometimes, but, um, well, hey, thanks, Barb. Um, I'm going to switch over to, uh, Sarah and she's going to share a little bit about what matching grants look like, um, on the, um, Give Local site. Um, awesome. Okay. I think I have two slides for this one, so. Okay. Um, okay, so for kind of the back end of Mighty Cause and the tools you'll be using, um, so matches can be set up uh, in a variety of ways. Basically, you're going to go to your uh, kind of, um, what did I write? So you go to your sidebar and you're going to click your fundraising tools and you'll click matches and it comes up with this kind of beautiful display here. Um, and you can see live matches that are queued. You can see past matches, uh, matches that have been closed, met, un incomplete type of thing. Uh, but as far as setting them up, it's really quite easy. You'll just click create. Um, and you can see in this kind of little video, there's just a bunch of different settings that are available to you. So it can be, you know, basically your one-to-one -one match where you meet match uh, the exact same amount as the donor is giving. So if someone gives $10, they're going to get matched $10. Um, we have a bunch of different kind of settings that you can implement. You can add photos, you can set the queue time, um, you can set your match type. So maybe you don't want to match one-to-one, -one. maybe you want to match half of what they're giving, maybe you want to stretch it a little bit further. Um, you can, there's a bunch of different settings here, so I would definitely encourage you uh, to just click it, check out what's available um, so that you kind of know different options when you're presenting different match ideas to uh, potential grantors. Um, but super easy tool. Once you have met your match, the match is closed. You can also download kind of a full report for that match. You can pull any data that you need. Um, sharing the data from your match is a really good kind of close the loop thing item that you can add to your list uh, with your grantor just so they can see how much of their match, you know, went to support your organization, how many donors took advantage of the match. That type of thing is really good data that you can follow up on. Um, and then I think I have one more slide for you, Lindsay. Um, and then once the match is met, your match can be paid through the platform uh, just as a regular online donation. So once the match has closed, you don't want an active match on the site at the moment that they, you know, complete their gift or else they'll be taking from that live match. So just, you know, thoughtfully timing when they complete their online gift, if it's an online gift. Um, and then of course your match sponsor can also write you a check, which you can then log as an offline gift. Um, two kind of really cool ways that Mighty Cause uh, can help 
kind of advertise your match. So when you do have a live match on your site, you're going to see um, a little sticker, like this little sticker on your donate button that says you have one match in Grants Live. So that kind of drums up some excitement on your page. Um, also, donors who are coming to the Give Local NRV site and are looking around for, you know, different organizations to support, there's a filter. They can click uh, has match um, and then they can see which organizations have a live match at that moment. So that sometimes helps donors who don't know who to give to or want to give to new orgs. Um, so that offers a little more visibility as far as your match as well. Um, and then we always encourage you, don't just rely on these tools, definitely share your progress on social media, promote your match in all of your, you know, your emails, um, wherever you're letting donors know about your campaign, let them know once you have a match live. Uh, and also be sure to add a countdown. If you have, you know, $200 left of your match or your match is, you know, only $100 left, all of that creates urgency, which encourages people to donate right then and there. Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. All right, I'm going to pause sharing and uh, check in with Jenny. Hey, Jenny, did you have any slides that you wanted to share? I do. Thank you. Um, oh. If I can share my screen. Sure, you should be able to hop on there. It looks like it says I can't share until the other participant stops sharing. Oh, well, that would be me. Um, <laughs> Hey, there you go. All right. Thank you. So I just had a few slides because I thought it was easier to illustrate um, what we had done with our email campaign last year. So just for some context, this was our theme we used last year, which was the Be a Dream Maker theme. So we had our um, adult learners we had taken pictures of many ahead of time and they we posted stories about what their dreams were and then our donors could be dream makers and so that was the the theme that we used and so i before i talk about this we did promote give local in our normal emails leading up to it so we have an email newsletter that comes out every other month and it was in that and we also had sort of given some peaks and asked people to save the date and that kind of thing and some other promotions. So these were the emails that were specifically um, dedicated to give local. And this is a little confusing because I took screen grabs from our MailChimp, but it starts at the bottom left here, but we had a series of four emails. And so at the beginning of June, when it was the early giving had opened, we went ahead and sent out one email um, about that, and I'll share I'll share a screenshot of these individual emails too. Um, so we sent that out a month out, just sort of sharing the campaign and early giving is open. And then we did one one week out. We also had an event in open house, and so we included the invite for that um, in there. And then we did one the day before, announcing that we were shooting for the early bird award. Um, the next morning, and then we sent out an update one in the afternoon during the day of. And of course, we were doing tons of social media promotion at the same time to go along with that. So this is our um, email that we sent at the beginning of the month, just saying early giving was officially open, kind of sharing this theme that we then started to trickle into our social media throughout the month. We talked about what Give Local is, and I think that language came right from um, Community Foundation is so great about sharing some things that we could um, grab, some templates. And then we also were lucky to have a match, so we announced that matching opportunity in that first email. And then this was our one week out email, um, again, sharing the date, mark your calendars, we're one week away, reminder about the early giving and our open house invitation, which is gonna be the next day, and then a match reminder. So just kind of getting everybody excited and making sure, um, oh, this is one week out, I was thinking next day, uh, but just making sure that they were paying attention and getting excited with us about it. And then, so the day before, uh, we sent another note out and this was the one, we thanked all the people who had given already during the month, talked about the early bird, opportunity that we were going for match reminder and another open house invitation. And so these were all through our MailChimp um, email campaign list, but we also had staff and board members were sending personal emails to their 
networks um, in general about Give Local, but specifically about the early bird opportunity. And so that's another kind of emails to not forget. They're more personal. And we gave our board members a kind of a copy and paste thing that they could use to send out um, to their family and friends. And then day of, we just sent one in the afternoon that was an afternoon update. And again, thanking everybody who'd given already, um, sharing that at that time we were at 65% of our goal, um, which we were happy to achieve at the end of the day. And another award opportunity with the Unique Donors Award. So just sort of sharing all that excitement, keeping everything in the theme, sharing more pictures. Um, and then I also, another type of email outside of the MailChimp campaign was on the day of Give Local. I had just blocked out my calendar for that day. And so as gifts came in, I sent a personal email to everybody that made a gift throughout the day. And that sounds like a lot, but well, you're lucky if it's a lot, um, but I just had a template in Gmail. And so I just copied and pasted. I had one for people who were repeat givers, which I could check pretty quickly. And then um, a different one for people who were new, new donors that day. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, Lindsay, anything you can think of that I didn't mention or that I wanted to touch on? No, I think, um from well you can tell me if I have the right impression it looks like you all did a, a fair amount of advanced work with writing out your templates but it also looked like you were populating in some information as you got in the running for certain grants and kind of updated people so you were in so you had already done the pre-work to help yourself but um so if you just want to share a little bit about that yeah, thank you. Yes, I had um, the emails that went out through MailChimp. Those were all created ahead of time, and I just left space to be able to um, add an update in there. And uh, I think I had, there was some language that the Community Foundation had shared, and there were some other places ahead of time. I was fortunate. Um, Lindsay and I both worked at Virginia Tech and went through several of the giving days there, and so I had at least an idea of how we could keep pushing that theme through and some of the language to use. And so I actually had saved um, some ideas to be able to create those, but it definitely was easier to have it all set up ahead of time and just be ready to click send that day. Absolutely. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, thank you. I'll stop my share of it. And I, I know we're closing in on time, so I'll just share um, quickly, um, and I might ask you something, Jenny, um, but uh, about our power hours and golden tickets. So um, with our change this year to um, running the event from noon to noon, we're going to shift the timeline a little bit of when we have those power hours and golden tickets. And as a refresher or for folks who are new, a power hour is a designated hour long period where if you're an organization who gets the most unique donors during that hour, then you win extra money. Um, and then a golden ticket is also a designated hour different from the power hours and um, all the donations that are made during that hour are kind of put into a pool and one is randomly selected. So if I made a gift to the literacy volunteers and mine was um, chosen, then they'd automatically um, get money, uh, additional money. And so um, I, I know folks um, uh, get excited about those each year. And um, what we're excited about this year with um, our 10th anniversary is we're going to uh, add an extra power hour, an extra golden ticket, and kind of change up the format a little bit of when they um, go throughout the day. But I know a lot of people kind of work on an email strategy to win a power hour. Do you mind just sharing a little bit about how you all have approached that in the past? Because you all have been our early birds in the past and getting your donors up at uh, between five and six to win that prize. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we did just send out as part of the I'll just call it our MailChimp strategy, but the thing that was going to the whole list, we did send out, we, we chose, first of all, that that was the one that we wanted to focus on and that we felt like based on our donor pool that we had a good chance of winning. And so rather than trying to, um, you know, pick ones throughout the day, we had decided ahead of time that's what we wanted to go for. And so we had the email lined up the day before, but then we also had prepped, again, our board members and our staff were all ready with our emails, and we knew um, the day before we were going to reach out to all our personal contacts. Um, 
Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. We It was fun to see the gifts come in early and a lot of family and friends participating. And um, we also shared, I mentioned emails. So along with the email, we were sharing on social media as well, just that we were specifically looking to win that award. I think those awards are great and I think they're really good motivation and it lets people... Um, we, we had a match as well. And so we were able to say kind of during that hour, the match was also active. And so if we win this prize, you could actually like triple, you know, triple your gift if you were one of the early givers. Absolutely. Hey, thanks, Jenny. Um, Thank and um, Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you if you just want to share about text to give quickly and I can finish out with prizes. Yep. Um, I have one slide. Perfect. Um, so text to give is a uh, advanced mighty cause feature provided to you all by this uh, CF NRV this year. Um, so really fun and easy to use. We always try to make everything easy for you all to use. Um, but basically, you'll just go to your fundraising. Uh, when you're on your organization page, you'll go to fundraising um, and then you'll click text to give. Uh, and it'll prompt you to create a keyword. So this is the keyword that your donors are going to be texting to this number um, to make a donation to your nonprofit. So one thing to note about keywords, they do have to be unique. So if you plug in, you know, cats, uh, that one might already be taken because <laughs> um, they, uh, so all kind of keywords just have to be unique. Um, so, but you can also create different keywords for different campaigns. Uh, for the most part, what you're going to want to do this year is just have a keyword um, for your organization page. You can also use it year round for fundraising. Um, if you have specific campaigns, like if you want donations just to go to a specific fundraising page that you've set up, uh, you can also create a keyword that uniquely links to that specific page. Um, but basically, once the keyword is set up, the donor is going to text that keyword to the number, they receive a, a response in their phone, then they just click that link in the text, uh, and then they can complete their donation in the amount that they choose. So really easy to use um, as you start sending your text, uh, as you start receiving the text, I should say, you'll start to see data about um, kind of gift count, uh, donation, basically a full donation report for your text to give. That's awesome, Sarah. And I, I just appreciate another tool to make giving easier for some people who like to, um, I, I mean, a lot of us are on our phones a lot. A lot of people like to uh, give on a desktop, whatever the format is. I feel like Money Cuts has you covered with giving options. It's awesome. Yeah, true. I will also say this uh, text to give is really good for live events. So if you do have like an in-person event um, or anything like that, it's really it's like just easy to throw it up on a sign or, you know, uh, a TV monitor type of thing and just have the information there. Absolutely. All right, um, so I know we only have a couple minutes left. So I, and I, we will share this Zoom recording with you and the PowerPoint, as well as the list of grants and prizes. So um, don't feel like you have to memorize them, but I just wanted to share a little bit about what we're, um, well, some of the stuff we're excited about this year. So this year in celebration of our um, 10th anniversary of Give Local, we are gonna give away 25,000 in grants and prizes, which we're really excited about. Um, and so um, on this prize list, we'll, you'll see some of the um, prizes and grants that we've had in the past, but we tried to um, see where we could increase amounts wherever we could. Um, so these two at the top, most money raised and most unique donors um, will now be worth 2000 each. And we split all the, once registration is closed, we look at our list and everyone's budget side size and split everyone into three categories of a small budget, medium, and large. And this is an attempt to try to um, uh, give out money to all kinds of different organizations, um, but we know that larger organizations sometimes more have more resources. And so just try to be a little bit equitable with giving um, a prize uh, or a grant rather to each, each size organization for money raised and unique donors. Um, we'll also have an early giving prize, one for peer to peer. And then this year, like I mentioned before, we're going to be adding an additional power hour and each are now going to be worth $750. And that's for this year with our 10th anniversary. Um, and more to come on when those power hours are going to be, um, but we will share that with you all.
and golden tickets. Those will be 500 again this year, and we're adding one additional ticket. And then we are going to have two superstars again. And so those are nonprofits that best embody the spirit of Give Local as decided by our team. Um, so another way to uplift other organizations that maybe didn't receive a grant, um, it's a great way to uh, shine the light on some other superstars. And two new um, prizes this year, one is text to give. Um, so with using that tool that Sarah just shared, um, if you, you're the one who raised the most money, you'll receive a prize. And then farthest donor, um, the person who is farthest away geographically from the Community Foundation office um, will can win an award for their organization. And then the one um, that we might be most excited about is um, another um, special anniversary opportunity is we are going to be an awarding an episode of Buzz, Buzz for Good. Um, and if you aren't familiar with this show, um, we'll definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, but it airs on New Year's, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Blue Ridge P PBS, and it features a different nonprofit each episode. And the whole goal is about generating buzz for that organization and addressing a marketing challenge or publicity challenge that the organization has and um, matching them with a pro bono organization that helps them out with that challenge. So we're really excited about being able to offer that to an organization, um, and we'll send more details after this call, but to be considered for the opportunity, your organization needs to fill out a short survey and actively participate and give local. Um, so I know I just ran through those quickly. Again, I'll send out the list um, after this meeting. Um, but uh, the last thing I just wanted to share quickly um, is I know that we went through these topics um, pretty quickly. And um, but just if you have any questions about any of the information we talked about today, uh, if you wanted to meet one on one, I'm always happy to meet with people and strategize and walk through the prop platform, help you build your page, whatever it is. Um, so unless there's any questions, let me just check. Um, yeah, it looks like we have one question, and this might be one for Sarah. If one were try one were to try to get board members to do a competition, as mentioned earlier, could each board member do a match as part of the team fundraiser? Um, I I'm maybe hold on. Is this for like fundraising pages? You think I might need some more specification? I'm thinking if this is for like a team fundraiser, maybe that's what mm -hmm. they meant. Um, yes. Yeah, so fundraising pages, like especially if your board members are all a part of a team, um, you can set up a match that specifically will be able to uh, just be applied towards those pages that are a part of the team. Okay. And in general, with an, uh, with matches, uh, an organization can have more than one match. That is that correct? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. You can set up different matches throughout the day. You can queue them so they go one after another. Um, lots of different kind of setup functions. Great. All right. Well, I know we're a bit over time, so um, we can wrap up here. But again, if folks have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.